Welcome to COB channel. Today we're talking about the short run decision making. First, let's define the definition of terms or important terms in this lesson. Tactical decision making consists of choosing among alternatives with an immediate or limited end in view. It, 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 there are some tactical decisions ten, that are tend to be short run in nature. However, short run decisions have long run consequences. Often, small-scale actions that serve a larger purpose is what tactical decision-making is. And also, sound tactical decisions achieve not only the limited objective but also serve a larger purpose. Second, strategic decision-making is selecting a more alternative strategy so that long-term competitive advantage is established. Now, examples of this is Either you make or buy a product, either you add or retain a product, either you shut down or continue the operations, and so much and other alternative decisions. We will discuss this very thoroughly as we move along. And third, decision model is a set of procedures that, if followed, will lead to a decision. Now let's move on to the tactical decision making process. This will be discussed in a step-by-step. -step. So first step, recognize and define the problem. So identify what the problem is. Like for example, we're, we're losing a lot of profit here and we're considering if we're going to shut down or continue the operations and what would be the effect of that decision to the overall company. Second is identify alternatives as possible solutions to the problem and eliminate any unfeasible alternatives. So this may be make or buy a product, add or retain a product line, shut down or continue operations, accept or reject a special order, and process further or sell at split off point a product. Third, Identify the costs and benefits associated with each feasible alternative. Eliminate the costs and benefits that are not relevant to the decision. So this will where relevant costs and irrelevant costs will come in. And this will be discussed later on. Compare the step four, compare the relevant costs and benefits for each alternative. So this will be calculated. So this includes calculation of net advantage or disadvantage of the decision. Fifth, assess qualitative factors. And six, select the alternative with the greatest overall benefit. Now, tactical cost analysis. What is it? It is the use of relative relevant cost data to identify the alternative that provides the greatest benefit to the organization. It includes predicting costs, identifying the relevant costs, and comparing relevant costs. Now presented here are the cost concept for decision making. Now do take note that only the in choosing between two alternatives, only the costs and revenues relevant to the decision should be considered. Now presented here are the relevant costs and irrelevant costs. What do we mean by relevant costs or revenues? These are the future costs or revenues that differ across alternatives. So this may be the purchase price when you consider making or buying a product line, or product rather, and, and accepting or rejecting a product line, shutting down or continuing the operations. So you, could, you may consider the variable costs, which are what mostly indicated in the problem, or the relative increase or decrease in the fixed cost. So the increase or decrease in fixed cost is also relevant cost. Now, irrelevant costs or revenues. If a feature cost is the same for more than one alternative, it has no effect on the decision. Such cost is an irrelevant decision, a relevant cost. It is also a sum cost if the cost is a past cost and the same for all alternatives. What do you mean by irrelevant cost? It doesn't change even if we made a decision. So, for example, if I buy a computer or if I make one, then the fixed cost of electricity will be the same or the, rather the usage of electricity will be the same, then the usage of electricity or electricity bill will, is irrelevant in my decision because either way, I'm still going to use the electricity in order to run my computer. So 
Electricity overall is a real irrelevant in the decision of buying or making a computer. So that is one example. Now we're going to present a lot of examples for different types of concept decision, concept rather concept for decision making as we move along. Now that we have identified relevant costs and irrelevant costs, we're going to teach you how to identify avoidable costs. Now, an avoidable cost is a cost that can be eliminated in whole or in part by choosing one alternative over another. In other words, it is the cost for God for choosing an alternative. So let's say, for example, if, if I extend my operations until midnight, like for example, in Jollibee, usually not all Jollibee are 24 hours. Some only opens during the day. And and the reason for that is that they want to save a lot of money for, let's say, utilities, labor, and also electricity because that costs too much for to operate the fast food chain for an entire day. So the rel so the relevant cost there is between opening for a day and opening for 24 hours. The the avoidable cost there is the cost of electricity, cost of labor, and cost of utilities because the diff because the operations requires these expenses and if you just operate for just a day then you'll save the expenses that you would be incurred if you were to operate for 24 hours and that is what we call avoidable costs and they are considered also relevant costs while unavoidable costs are irrelevant costs like for example the ones that the the costs that you are that you can control such as uh, insurance, mm, insurance, depreciation, salaries of top management, and so on and so forth. So we're going to ignore those unavoidable costs in our alternative decision making. Next is the steps in identifying relevant costs. Now, step one, eliminate costs and benefits that do not differ between alternatives. Step two, use the remaining costs and benefits that differ between alternatives in making the decision. The costs that remain are the differential or avoidable costs. And also, let's define opportunity costs. It is the benefit that is foregone as a result of pursuing some course of action. Now, they, now most people, uh, mis has the common mis the common mistakes of most people here about opportunity cost is that they think that it is the cost that is foregone as a result of pursuing some course of action. Well, apparently, opportunity cost is the benefit that is foregone. The cost that is foregone is the avoidable cost. So please remember that because that's where people mistakes usually are. Next is the cost concept for decision making. So here are the example of relevant costs and irrelevant costs. Now for the relevant costs, just like what we have discussed, avoidable costs. The relevant costs, opportunity costs, the benefit for gun, fixed costs, unavoidable costs. Now let's illustrate of the relevant costs and irrelevant costs. The Cesare Computers makes 5,200 units of a circuit board CB76 at a cost of $280 per inch. Variable cost per unit is $200 and fixed cost per unit is $80. Pitch Electronics offers to supply 5,200 units of CB76 for 205. If the Cesare buys from Pitch, it will be able to save 10 dollars per unit in fixed cost but continue to incur the remaining seventy dollar per unit now enumerate the cost and cost savings and identify the relevant and irrelevant costs based on the given information now let's first identify what is in the problem now the company wants to determine if it if it's going to buy or make 5,200 units of circuit board. So that is the problem and alternative. Now next, let's identify the make decision first. So the, co the, the cost of making 
is as follows the variable cost per unit of $200 and a fixed cost a total fixed cost of $416 and it is presented here now why did we why did I uh, put here the total amount of fixed costs because as we know fixed costs will remain that will remain the same regardless of how many units you have you have made provided it is within the relevant range now it is now ignore the fixed cost per unit because the fixed cost per unit will change as the number of units you have produced but the total fixed cost if you compute it it will still remain the same so that is why fixed costs are usually considered irrele re irrelevant costs but in this case let's see now next is let's identify the buy decision now the cost of buying as stated in the problem is $205 per unit now the fixed cost you will save a fixed cost of $52,000 as computed here so 10 times 5,200 units and the remaining will be incurred regardless of the decision which is $364 now that we have identified the make and buy decision components now let's go let's identify the relevant costs now as we have no as we have discussed earlier relevant costs are the cost that is um, avoidable or has an incremental incremental changes in the decision now the variable cost is a relevant cost because it is you will incur it if you make or if you make the cost of buying you will incur it if you buy and the fixed cost savings from buying instead of making is the savings that you will get if you buy the product rather than the make now the relevant cost is the only $364,000 this is the fixed cost that you would incur regardless of the decision and this is considered irrelevant cost simply because regardless if you make or buy 5,200 units you will still incur a fixed cost of $364 or whether or not you make a decision whether uh, whether or not you choose either the alternative you would still incur this $364,000 and it is considered irrelevant in our decision making and that is the illustration for irrelevant and relevant costs.